so we have these following greenhouse gases number one water vapor number two co2 number three methane number four cfc which is chlorofluorocarbon and number five n2o which is nitrous oxide number six ozone which is tropospheric ozone or what you call as secondary ozone which is a pollutant or bad ozone so let's first talk about the natural ones so water vapor and co2 are the natural greenhouse gases or natural component of greenhouse gases so as we can see that 82 per 89 percent sorry 89 percent of the natural greenhouse effect is caused by water vapor and seven percent of the natural greenhouse effect is caused by co2 so these two water vapor and co2 are the natural greenhouse gases if somebody asks you then water vapor or the hydroxyl residual not listed as a greenhouse gas because of the two reasons the first reason is that the amount of these water vapor in our atmosphere is quite variable and the second one is they are not anthropogenic they are natural in nature now coming to the contribution of greenhouse gases and global warming if we see the percentage contribution of the greenhouse gases in the global warming on the globe so co2 rank 1 with 60 percent contribution followed by methane which is 20 percent followed by chlorofluorocarbon which is 14 percent followed by n2o which is 6 percent so we should keep the percentage and the order into mind that CO2 60% followed by methane which is 20% followed by CFC chlorofluorocarbon which contributes something around 14% and last but not the least is N2O which is 6% so these are the percentage contribution of these greenhouse gases in global warming and there is a special note like gases which absorb radiation more than 4 micrometer like if some gas absorbs a radiation so more than 4 micrometer is also called as greenhouse gas so it is quite obvious like that will be a greenhouse gas if it is absorbed more than 4 micrometer sorry So now we will be talking about these greenhouse gases one by one right so if you talk about co2 so we'll be dealing the details of these individual gases so if it comes to the pre-industrial concentration of co2 so it was around 280 ppm pre-industrial concentration of CO2 present concentration of CO2 if you talk about in 2017 it's around 400 or 410 ppm in the literature or the observations so now coming to the absorption reasons so what wavelength a particular gas absorbs like CO2 if you talk about as a greenhouse gas it absorbs in two ranges the first one is 14 to 11 nanometer sorry 14 to 19 nanometer right and the second one is 4 to 5 micrometer so that must be kept in mind that one wavelength is 14 to 19 another one is 4 to 5 micrometer this questions have been asked many times and you see that what range the CO2 will absorb so one is 14 to 19 right another one is 4 to 5 right and this 4 to 5 micrometers will not allow the radiation to go back into atmosphere 
and the point must be noted that CO2 concentration was first measured at Mauna Loa Observatory located in Hawaii Island in US in 1958 this question has been asked in some of the good exams that CO2 concentration was first measured at Mauna Loa Observatory located in Hawaii in US in 1958 now we will be talking about water vapors or hydroxyl radical so water vapor is the most prominent greenhouse gas like it's the most important greenhouse gas or the natural greenhouse gas and it absorbs radiations in two bands one is less than 8 micrometer sorry another one is more than 18 micrometers so one radiation range is more than 18 micrometer another one is less than 8 micrometer so this more than 18 micrometer band for water vapor is the main property like it majorly absorb in more than 18 micrometer of the wavelength so now you can see a figure where on we have shown the absorption spectra of co2 water vapor along with the earth's emission spectra so you can see that the water vapor absorbs in two wavelength so you'll be seeing two peak one at the less than eight micrometer which you can see in the graph another one is around 18 micrometer similarly for co2 also you will see two peaks one at four to five micrometer another one is at four to 19 micrometer where you don't see a peak is the mid region with something around 7.5 to 13.5 micrometer where we see that earth's emission spectra lies so this 7.5 to 13.5 micrometer is a very important range which is referred to as atmospheric window and it is designed only with respect to the natural greenhouse gas such as co2 and water so atmospheric window first ranges from 7.5 to 13.5 micrometer that must be remembered then this atmospheric window is designed with respect to the natural greenhouse gases such as co2 and water vapors so what do we mean by atmospheric window let's understand the concept of atmospheric window so if we superimpose the IER absorption spectra of co2 and water with earth's emission spectra so we observe an unobstructed region of spectrum between 7.5 to 13.5 or some of the literature wrote it as 7 to 13.5 or 7 to 13 micrometer through which the infrared radiations from the earth surface can still escape and this region or section is called as atmospheric window so means that this is that unobstructed region of the earth's emission spectrum from where the IR radiations from the earth's surface can escape right and this region is specifically called as atmospheric window which ranges from 7.5 to 13.5 or 7 to 13.5 this question have been asked many times now if we talk about the major sink of carbon sink means which can absorb carbon so the major absorber or major sink of carbon so the biggest sink of the carbon is ocean followed by soil followed by forest so biggest sink of co2 or the carbon is ocean followed by soil followed by forest now coming to the methane which is another important greenhouse gas so methane gas if we talk about so basically methane absorbs radiation in two region which is 3 to 5 micrometer to so one window is 3 to 5 micrometer another one is 7 to 8.5 another one is 7 to 8.5 so this 7 to 8.5 and specifically this 8.5 micrometer it's between atmospheric window more potential as compared to co2 so this window 7 to 8.5 micrometer absorption makes methane 
a very important and very potential or very potent greenhouse gas in compared to CO2 because this reason 8.5 micrometer as you can see lies at the shoulder of atmospheric window which was ranging from 7.5 to 13.5 micrometer so CO2 C, sorry CH4 or methane absorption at 3 to 4 micrometer is not important because the radiation from the earth hardly has any emission in this region However, its absorption band of 7 to 8.5 micrometer make it a potent greenhouse gas which place it just at the edge of atmospheric window and the atmospheric window was 7.5 to 13.5 micrometer. Now we may talk about some of the sources of methane. So the first source was paddy field where we find a lot of lot of methane by methanogenic bacteria in water lock conditions and anaerobic decomposition goes on then gut of ruminants or the animals like buffalo cattle so these are called ruminants and their gut is also an important source of methane then we have methane hydrate which is also called as clethrate and these are the new potential energy sources so you can see in the pictures that in a arrangement like a benzene ring sort of structure in each Carbon is denoted by a water molecule inside which the methane is trapped that is also called as clethrate And if chemically you want to write it The methane hydrate or clethrate it is CH4 dot 6 H2O So six molecules of water of hydration So methane hydrate is a potential energy source for future which people are trying to exploit Paddy field. In paddy fields, we have also have the anaerobic conditions where methanogenic bacteria work and they convert carbon into methane. So, as evident by this reaction, C plus 2H2 give rise to CH4. If we talk about sinks of methane, so methane is basically destroyed by OH radical, hydroxyl radical, which is an atmospheric scavenger, atmospheric detergent reactive oxygen species so these all are the name of OH radical fast reacting species so as you can see in the reaction that methane reacts with OH radical in the presence of oxygen to give rise ozone plus CO2 plus water plus hydrogen gas and this ozone and CO2 are more harmful so you can see here one of the greenhouse gas methane get oxidized but results in the production of two more harmful or greenhouse gases like ozone and CO2. So oxidation of methane would produces water vapors and ozone with CO2 which are themselves greenhouse gases. Therefore methane has a quite high global warming potential in comparison to CO2 almost 16 to 20 times on the kettle scale. Now we will be talking about another greenhouse gas which is N2O. So it's naturally occurring greenhouse gas that has been increased due to human activity like application of nitrogenous fertilizers or burning of fossil fuels which are rich in nitrogen. So they emit N2O. If we talk about its pre industrial concentration in 1750, so it was something around 270 ppb. But presently, it's in the range of 316 ppb or 316 ppb. And this gas absorbs radiation in the range of 3.5 micrometer, if you see, and then 7.5 to 9. And this 7.5 to 9 micrometer window is again crucial because it lies on atmospheric window edge. Atmospheric window was 7.5 to 13.5. So since its absorption band lies on the shoulder of atmospheric window, one of the edge, N2 is very potent greenhouse gas. And basically the sources of N2, if we talk about, it's like breaking of fertilizers, nitrogen fertilizers, so nitrogen based fertilizers, or so ammonia based fertilizers, and due to production of nylon fibers. So let me remind you, nylon fiber, if you talk about two types of nylon, as they are nylon 6 and nylon 6. 
So myelon 6 is basically having precursor like caprolactam and myelon 6, 6 if you remember your elementary knowledge of 12th class it is having the monomonad 